Sony's PlayStation 5 is finally upon us with a huge build-up in 2020. So this is a big, powerful console that's super fast and offers some exceptional graphics and audio experiences, as well as the DualSense controller, which feels like a real differentiating factor in the latest edition of the battle between the big console brands. So there's upgrades across the board in terms of hardware, software and user experience making this a fantastic follow-up to the highly popular PlayStation 4. So first impressions are often everything and the first impression that you get with the PlayStation 5 are it's absolutely massive. So it's 38 centimeters tall, 25 centimeters deep and 10 centimeters wide. So technology is often designed to blend into the home but the PlayStation 5 stands out and demands your attention. So the unit itself is big and this time it comes with white face plates rather than the black design of the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. So it's similar in size to a small PC, and the PlayStation 5 can stand upright or lay on its side. It comes with a little stand that almost makes it look like it's floating. It looks like some kind of space age technology that may have been developed by NASA, and only time will tell as to whether this will be a good decision or bad in the not too distant future. When the unit is on, the signature PlayStation Blue beams out from the top of the console with varying colours depending on the mode of the console and which state it's in. So this console is not going to be something that's going to be hidden away in a TV unit. It demands space and it catches the eye and personally I'm warming to the design so when I first saw the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 I tended to prefer the Xbox Series X simpler design but the longer that the PlayStation 5 sits in my living room the more I do tend to like it. So in terms of the ports so on the front we've got the USB A and C with two more super speed USB A ports on the back and then we've got the standard HDMI out which supports up to 8K variable refresh rate. Also on the back there's an Ethernet port and the PlayStation 5 also supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.1 and the brick AC adapter is gone and that's been replaced with a simple power cord that goes straight into the wall. So that is the outside of the console, so let's check out the inside and its capabilities. So this is a fast console, you know, it's up to the standard of desktop PCs on launch and there's a custom 825GB SSD paired with an AMD Zen 2 CPU with 16GB of GDDR6 memory, meaning your games are going to run super fast. So the SSD is slightly smaller than the 1TB drive found within the PlayStation 4 Pro and I imagine the hard drive space is going to be a problem this generation with games like Call of Duty nearing 200 gigabytes. So, so the CPU and RAM do have a significant impact on loading times for games, and you're going to notice this immediately with new games as well as improvements to old games. Fast travel in games is snappy and we're really going to notice this feature in new games such as Ratchet and Clank. We can load into whole new worlds in a second. So previous gen games like Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, Red Dead 2 and Destiny 2 have all seen significant improvements in loading times and this could have a massive impact on the game design itself. So at the moment when things load we see tooltips and game hints plus sometimes we're placed in winding corridors or crawl spaces to help load environments. Fundamentally, we're going to see some changes, but we don't really get a glimpse of the opportunities at the moment because many games have been released across different generations. It's most likely going to be into 2022 before we see dedicated next generation games designed with all the new PS5 features in mind. Ray tracing is going to be a big deal this generation, so this is a rendering process that creates realistic lighting effects by tracking the way that light moves and reflects in the environment. So ray tracing offers the potential for real-time global illumination, meaning textures and detail look better than they ever have done before, and that includes water, reflections, materials, and features on a person like skin and hair. So as I mentioned before, I did upgrade to an OLED 4K TV at the same time as the PS5, and the graphics are just simply the best I've ever seen. So the frame rates have been improved too with up to 120 FPS support. So Destiny 2's PvP is going to offer 120 FPS with their next gen upgrade when that's released on the 8th of December but games like Call of Duty use this feature already. And PS5 supports up to 8K with future proofing in mind but hardly any people have 8K TVs at the moment and currently it does support native 4K with HDR and games tend to offer graphic mode choices which allow you to prioritise visuals over performance if you want to. So for example, you can run games at 30 frames per second but with higher fidelity visuals or you can run a stable 60 frames per second with slightly lower grade visuals. 
The audio has been given an upgrade alongside with the visuals with a new 3D audio engine, and this allows many more audio sources to be processed at the same time. So Sony released their own headphones at launch to support the new tech, and they really make you feel like you're in the middle of the game environment. So if you have a standard edition PS5, then you also get an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive, and this allows for more data to be contained on a disc, which is going to be hugely beneficial to game developers. And this also means you can use the PS5 as a UHD Blu-ray player, so if you want to use this as a media device, then you can. Next up, we've got the DualSense controller. So Sony publicised their haptic feedback and adaptive triggers as one of their first press releases related to the PS5, and many people kind of shrugged and kind of moved on. Now this controller is in our hands, you can see why Sony came out on the front foot with this one. Yeah, it definitely has that wow factor that next generation consoles deserve, and could be a differentiating factor when people decide between the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. The form and the weight has changed and it feels like a quality product. It is hard to convey in videos and text, but this feels good in the hands and also has a certain heft to it. The buttons are responsive and easy to access and overall it feels really good in the hands. PlayStation long kept with the DualShock style of the pad and the design didn't change much from the PS3 and the PS4, but this is somewhat more elegant, more curves than straight lines, and feels much more like an Xbox controller than previous generation PlayStation controllers. So it looks good and it feels great and the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers are the real innovation allowing you to feel different textures in games like never before. So if you're running on sand or ice then you can feel it in your hands via the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers can provide resistance against you pressing the buttons based on scenarios in games. So I'm looking forward to using the bow in Horizon Forbidden West or perhaps how the God of War team are looking to implement some new features. There's a built-in microphone in the controller which works okay for party chat if you don't want to shell out on an expensive mic. It does the job well, although I imagine most gamers would want something dedicated for this feature. Much like before, you can blow into the mic in some games which feels a bit gimmicky as ever, but the ease of communication features definitely outweigh the gimmicks. There's also a create button there now instead of share, which allows for screen capture and you can instantly broadcast to Twitch or YouTube at the click of a button. Next up, let's have a look at the games. So Sony's launch lineup is quite strong this time with a console exclusive for Demon Souls. Many of the other launch titles are launching across generation with Spider-Man Miles Morales landing on both PS4 and PS5. So bundled with PS Plus are some of the biggest games from the PS4 era, including God of War, Monster Hunter World, Last of Us Remastered, Uncharted, Persona 5, Bloodborne and many more. And Bugsnacks is also available for a free download during the launch month. So as for the PS5 games out now, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Demon's Souls, Destiny 2 Beyond Night, Fortnite, Marvel's Spider-Man Mars Morales, The Pathless, Watch Dogs Legion, Yakuza Like a Dragon and Bug Snacks. And in terms of games coming soon, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, Far Cry 6, Final Fantasy 16, Gran Turismo 7, Hitman 3, Horizon Forbidden West, Immortals Phoenix Rising, Kenner, Bridge of Spirits, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart and Resident Evil Village. So let's have a look at the user experience. So setting up the machine was nice and easy. And there are options to bring across your data from the PS4. And you can even set this up through the mobile app, which I personally didn't try. But this option is there available for you if you want to give it a go. Setup was nice and easy and very fast. Also asking me if I had any games that I wanted to load whilst the setup process was taking place, which was a really nice touch. When you log into the PS5, you're greeted with your avatar and you can set up multiple accounts to manage multiple users if required. The PlayStation interface has been given a fresh look, although it does have a familiar feel to it as well, so if you've been a PlayStation 4 user, you're not going to get lost. The cross-media bar is still here organising your games and apps, plus access to the PlayStation Store and PlayStation Plus. So as you navigate across the screen, each game provides a new splash screen image with some music from the game, which gives you a little taster, theming the whole interface around the game that you're focused on. Pressing the PlayStation button on the controller brings up a new control center menu, which can be customized if you want. And here you have common functions like home, turn off the console, notifications, download, music, etc. And there are some really nice accessibility options for players with varying needs like chat, transcription, closed captions, button remapping, and also color inversion too. 
the user experience as a whole feels like it's had a look of paint with some nice feature improvements but but familiar enough to know immediately how to navigate around it feels like a worthy shop window for this next generation machine so in summary the playstation 5 is a worthy successor to the playstation 4 with upgrades in every department the graphics look incredible it's fast and it's also quiet too and it's full of features that are future proof meaning that the console is going to stay relevant for years to come on the games from the launch lineup it's slightly lackluster with only demon souls and sackboy dedicated ps5 games although launch lineups always tend to be a little bit hit and miss so perhaps the most surprising of all is the controller you know i didn't expect to be blown away by the input device but this is right up there with the best controllers ever made the playstation 5 is an impressive device albeit very large but at the end of the day the form will be forgotten it's definitely all going to be about the games so the release date was the 19th of November 2020 in the UK and the 12th of November in the US, Canada, Japan and South Korea. It's £449, $499 for the standard edition and £349 and $399 for the digital edition.